Excuse me. May I go to the bathroom first? Of course you may. Thank you. Hey guys, hey yo! Welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. And this is just a little spur of the moment video. Um, I want to talk about one of my most favorite comedies of the 80s, and that is 1988's Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, directed by the great Frank Oz. <clears throat> and starring Michael Caine and Steve Martin along with Glenn Headley. Now, this is one of those films where, in my opinion, it's an underrated gem. I see Dirty Rotten Scoundrels as a 50-50 film. It's 50-50 whether you've seen it and 50-50 whether you've not seen it and never heard of it. And that was me in 2012. And after that, I finally saw it and I love this film and adore it. And I want to talk about it and put this video out there for people that possibly haven't seen it and don't realize it is such a damn good time and a damn good cinematic experience featuring two brilliant actors that are each ends of the spectrum in terms of the straight man and the comedic insane man with some physical comedy and a bombastic score and a beautiful setting in France. And again, to me, Dirty Ron Scoundrels is one of those underrated gems that at the time was a box office smash, essentially, but sort of got buried in amongst a lot of other amazing comedies back in the day. Like I said, you've got the pairing of Michael Caine and Steve Martin, the epitome of the odd couple, playing con artists Freddie Benson and Lawrence Jameson that are essentially at the opposite ends of the spectrum in their line of work. Kane's Lawrence has a crew of two working for him, including the local police chief, Andre, and his very own Emperor Palpatine. <sighs> While Steve Martin's Freddy is a sleazy carriage riding confidence man that coasts from town to town, all the while being directed by Frank Oz. The film takes place in the fictional French town of beaumont sur and Steve Martin's Freddie Benson moves in on Michael Caine's Lawrence Jameson's turf with being a confidence man and grifting from town to town, conning local cashed up women. And with the notion if you can't beat them, join them, Lawrence takes on Freddie as an apprentice, and they then make a bet to try and out-con one another with a woman by the name of Janet Colgate, played by the late, great Glenn Headley. Leading, in my opinion, to one of the greatest twists in a comedy, let alone a film. And that's all I will say. For those of you who have seen it, please do not spoil it in the comment section. I think the twist is so damn good. If you have not seen the film, I highly recommend checking this one out, especially with that twist at the end. It's just so damn good. Now, the reason why Michael Caine's Lawrence is intimidated by Steve Martin's Freddie Benson is because he is known as the Jackal, a con artist that is going through towns, conning cashed up women and taking away business from Michael Caine's Lawrence Jameson's con artistry. That makes sense. When it comes to the performances and the physical comedy, there isn't a bad apple in the bunch. Like I said, you have Michael Caine, Steve Martin, Glenn Headley. You've also got Ian McDermott in a very small role as Arthur the Butler, who works alongside Michael Caine's Lawrence Jameson. But the physical comedy is brilliant. Obviously, perfect segue. Steve Martin's performance as Ruprecht the Monkey Boy. And this is the length that Steve Martin and Michael Caine's characters go to to con rich women. Just some of the bombastic shenanigans that happen in this film. It is like a goofy version of Ocean's Eleven minus ripping off the MGM Grand. But instead, you're just ripping off Lady Fanny of Omaha. But getting back to Ruprecht the Monkey Boy, when Michael Caine brings in one of their fresh victims, it sounds so bad, but essentially they're gonna con her out of money and they say they're gonna get married. And Michael Caine says, I wanna introduce you to my brother, Ruprecht. And I can't really do it justice in terms of explaining it. Here's just a little highlight. <laughs> now, I want you to meet Ruprecht. <laughs> Ruprecht! May I take your trident, sir? Yes. And others. Now, not only talking about Steve Martin's performance as Rupert the Monkey Boy, you also have Michael Caine taking on the role of Dr. Emil Schufthausen. Again, when they're trying to outcon each other, Michael Caine takes on the role of a German doctor. And for a lot of the film, sports a German accent. And again, it's just these two actors running rampant with their skills and having an absolute ball in the process. All the while, you've got a beautiful backdrop of a small little French town going on here. The score by Miles Goodwin. The only way to describe it is bombastic and incoherent. Which is a perfect fitting for what this film is about. And 
for a good representation of Michael Caine and Steve Martin's character being just the absolute epitome of the odd couple. There is one moment where the score emulates the two cops from Halloween 5 score, the, the clown noises and the horns and the... Eh, oh. Now, a lot of you probably have seen Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, but guys, for those of you who haven't, I highly recommend checking this film out. It's one of those films that just makes you smile, and at the end, when the credits roll, you just say, that was a bloody cute film. It just, I don't know, it gives you the warm fuzzies, if that makes sense. And thank fuck we haven't had a sequel or a remake. <sighs> No. Steve Martin and Michael Caine deliver brilliant performances and their chemistry is matched by some incredible physical comedy and with Glenn Headley it just makes for the perfect trifecta. This was the holy trinity before we saw Gal Gadot, Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill up on screen. And with that, I'm going to be giving Dirty Rotten Scoundrels 5, I'm sorry, a fail juice out of five. So guys, if you have seen Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, and yes, I know this is a very random video, but I watched it again the other day. I actually showed Chloe Dirty Rotten Scoundrels for the first time, and she loved it, and I just wanted to talk about it. I, I love introducing the film to people that haven't seen it before and seeing their reactions. And again, it just gives you the warm fuzzies. Let me know your thoughts down below on this film, and what are some other underrated little gems from the 80s and 90s in terms of comedies that you would recommend? Love you guts, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.